just to start before this um, Malparm Malparm presentation pops up, uh, just shortly about me. So my name is Mate. I come from Slovenia. I've been involved with the OpenEHR for almost 10 years now. Um, my profession is basically uh, you know, computer science and then software engineering, but I do, don't do that uh, for quite some time. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, so yeah, uh, my latest position is on the is in, in the National Institute of Public Health. Um, so I'm surrounded with doctors, you know, um, focusing on public health. Um, also participated in different sort of uh, work groups where most doctors, you know, are sort of most doctors are present, and sort of myself as being this weird thing or weird. Um, um, sort of transforming um, person who sort of listens to doctors and try to um, uh, find solutions for their problems. Um, so yeah, uh, as the title says, I will present to you um, uh, eHealth in Slovenia. So what have we done with, um, also with the help of OpenEHR uh, in Slovenia? And, uh, you know, we've heard concepts like open platforms, um, today, and um, you know, I, I tend to think about our national e-health as a platform, uh, not necessarily an open one yet. Um, just you know, openness as itself is understood differently if you ask companies and firms, uh, or if you have asked um, you know governments and sort of public institutions. Um, but yeah, the, the general idea is we have this national platform, and then we have now some central um, you know, components, and then we have the complementers who are de developing new solutions in our healthcare system. Um, okay. Uh, I will present, you know, shortly an overview of the different services we have or we provide for our healthcare system uh, for patients, you know. Um, and then I will focus specifically on, on those parts that I found most important or find most important uh, and are related obviously with OpenHR, of course. Um, um, and then at the end I will just present how we are doing now um, in terms of the implementation or, or maturity of the implementation. Um, just as introduction, so uh, Slovenia, it's a small country. We have a two million population. Um, uh, 92 public institutional providers, that means hospitals, you know, community healthcare centers. Um, so 27 hospitals, 64 community healthcare centers, and a little less than 100 uh, you know, nursing homes and, and similar institutions. We also have private healthcare providers. Um, some are sort of uh, uh, in contract with our national health insurance, and some are, you know, totally private. So we have a mix of everything. Um, with respect to IT and, and technology, um, you know, the, the sort of the most important uh, players in, in this field is are, um, first of all, the National Health Insurance Institution. Um, they are sort of in charge in our country um, of the issuing of our health card. So, you know, each patient has a health card. Um, also, each doctor has a, um, his professional health card. Um, and, of course, the insurance company is, um, you know, in charge of, of the, the funding of all the services provided by the providers. Um, weirdly, but that's the, our reality, um, the health insurance fund hasn't been involved in our national e-health. So, um, um, there's a story that sort of the, the minister that was active during that time when our national e-health started didn't really get along with the, with the CEO of our health insurance institution. So, they, they just sort of uh, diverged, and um, so we have a lot of activities done by the health insurance fund, but not really in line with the national e-health. But okay. Um, so besides that, we have a really fragmented market in terms of, let's say, software or solution providers. 
um, as it says here, more than 20 different you know, um, IT companies providing different types of software from uh, you know, laboratory information systems, uh, medical records, uh, box systems, whatever. So um, different, uh, a lot of vendors. Um, and a bit over 10 of those um, sort of systems or providers are connected to our national e-health services. For example, we don't yet cover, um, we don't yet integrate with the laboratory information systems. <clears throat> So there's, uh, besides those, uh, there is also the National Institute of Public Health. Um, in 2015, uh, this National E-Health was sort of transferred to, 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 this, to this institution um, that became in charge of the governance of, of the health system, um, which is, you know, a, a bit of an interesting choice, um, considering that this institution employs, um, you know, public health experts, not IT people. So, but uh, this is how things are. Uh, and of course, the healthcare providers. We, we don't have a centralized IT in terms of having one decision body or one level of decision. But each healthcare provider can choose um, uh, its vendor uh, or sort of provider of, of solutions in, in terms of IT. So we have this really complex and messy situation. Um, <clears throat> the eHealth uh, project, or eHealth in Slovenia, started in 2008. Uh, it started as a project. Um, it was uh, basically uh, funded by the European Union. Uh, the funding stopped in, in, in 2015 when our legislation passed. Um, and then we secured funding from um, you know, from the national budget, and uh, also the you know the e-health team that was working on on this project moved to the to the new institution. We spent 20, 22 million euros for the initial development, and now we spent a little less than five million uh, per annum uh, on you know further um, improving either implementation or new new services, etc. So. A little less than five million. Of course, the services are provided to to all the levels of healthcare system: primary, secondary, tertiary. Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> just shortly, so uh, as I tend to think about the national health as a platform, so I will now just. Um, there's this picture of, of our sort of stack. You know, we have a lot of uh, applications or services providing. And then there is the, the underlying stack, which is, also, of course, uh, um, constitutes open EHR, where we, um, you know, model data and have, uh, and link that to terminologies. Unfortunately, we don't have an internal team that would be strong enough to do that on its own. So we are really, um, you know, glad and happy to have this international open EHR community that can help, you know. Uh, we are a really, really small team. Um, there's only nine people working in, in our um, institution on the National E-Health. Um, <clears throat> of course, the, you know, the integrating healthcare in enterprise and et cetera. So I will, I will um, uh, talk about this a little bit later. Um, in terms of sort of the key, key elements or key components of our platform, it was mentioned before, you know, you, you need to have uh, basically identity management, you know, so um, that's one of the important uh, components. Uh, the other is called the central registry of patient data. Um, this is sort of a legal term in our country, but it's basically a data repository um, on a national level. Um, it's not... Um, I will, I will jump into that later. Um, then the next sort of important, uh, you know, Lego brick of, of our uh, the platform uh, are the knowledge sources or resources. So this means terminologies, open EHR models, workflow models, and stuff like that. So um, example is also the uh, the drug interaction database or uh, etc. So and then there are the boundary resources or the APIs, the interfaces. This the another element which is uh, sort of a, an important part of our of our uh, platform. 
And of course, all this is sort of supported by an IT infrastructure, um, which includes also, so besides the servers and everything, we also have a physically separate network. So all the data that is shared between the providers um, is done over a secure private network. So we actually you know, bought routers and have this network uh, available. Um, uh, on these uh, sort of components, we have like almost 20 different services running um, or using those basic components. Um, and I'm not going to go uh, into detail on all of them, as I said, but we have like e-prescription, e-appointments, um, patient portal, um, you know, the user's database, um, and then more like telemedicine services, the telestroke, teleradiology, um, et cetera. So different services built, and actually we are building new ones, um, you know, as new needs occur and sort of, um, you know, when the ministry decides we need something new or we need to cover um, some aspect of healthcare um, with, with some technology or solutions. Um, <clears throat> so the, uh, the basic or the most important elements are certainly the ICT infrastructure. I won't go into that, but uh, uh, just to sort of note an issue we have is, um, you know, as we had, we obtained the funding from the European Union, um, we were able to sort of fund purchasing of, of um, the network infrastructure that was needed, but only for the public um, healthcare, right? So now we have quite some, you know, phys physicians outside this um, um, scope because they are sort of private providers, and they are sort of um, we rely on them to invest in that in uh, infrastructure, uh, and and of course they are not really happy about it. So we have this ongoing discussion. So, um, <clears throat> but you know, being part of this private network is mandatory if you want to use e-health services in Slovenia. So um, we actually have a, it's not a legislation, but it's part of legislation, you know, where it strictly says if you want to use the national e-health services, you need to be um, included in this network. You, this is the only way you can access those, that data. <clears throat> um, the next component or the next element important is the uh, the user database. Um, this is actually the central point of truth of, uh, for our users and for patients. So when patients use their portal to access their data, they're actually logging in through this database. The same goes for all the physicians and nurses and everything, everybody. Um, <clears throat> in addition to that, we've just lately um, upgraded the database to accommodate also the requirements we obtained from the sort of European level. You probably all know about the ADAS regulation and the EID. So now our patient portal supports, um, you know, login from people from different countries of EU. Of course, they don't see anything because they don't have much data in there, but uh, they can log in, register, and then log in um, using their EID. <coughs> Of course, um, this, this database is not just about having the identities, but also you know, defining different roles uh, one can have in our e-health system. So physicians you know, um, are in the role of physicians, nurses have their roles. Basically, each service or application is defines what kind of roles it sort of supports. So this is all being managed from this, uh, in this database. And this administration is not done centrally, you know, by us, because that's, uh, that can be a lot of work. We've basically distributed that work to everybody. So uh, you have, like, um, administrative people in hospitals who can do that for their employees. Okay? So each healthcare provider organization sort of manages this um, access rights um, on their own. <coughs> So the, the third uh, major element of our national e-health is the central registry of patient data. Um, 
which we see as the heart of our e-health system. Um, this is a sort of a picture that um, um, you know, so shows a bit more structure of how it's built. And um, you can all see that you know, down at the um, open, open EHR is, plays a role here, right? An important role. But it's not just about open EHR. It's not just about structured data, right? Um, this is our goal, you know. One day have data structured, you know, all data structured. But the reality is different. So we have um, um, most data is unstructured still. That means PDFs, right? Um, but the important point is that we are sort of ready to, you know, to eat everything. You know, this is a big beast that is sort of hungry for data, and um, whatever we are given, we just, you know, we are happy. Okay, we, we store that. Um, uh, then the important element of our uh, central or, or central system is the IHE backbone. Um, this is basically a standardized infrastructure. So, you know, we all know about IHE and what it's doing in, in the terms of standardization. Um, so we've purchased, we purchased this infrastructure in 2012 uh, before this was sort of part of our system. Um, and actually, all the, all the healthcare providers, um, they send data through this backbone to, to the central repository, right? So we integrate it with all the providers of the, let's say, electronic medical records. Uh, so their systems send data through this adapter to this backbone, right? So there, there are repositories that take just about any data you send, it, send them, right? But then we have this sort of twist or uh, intelligence that if you know, part of this data that is being sent contains structured open EHR data, it is also written in this open EHR repository. So we are simultaneously building this structured repository of data. <clears throat> this is terminology services, so, yeah. It's been a shock. <laughs> so, yeah, good, good. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this, our, basically this uh, central system is uh, um, international, um, uh, sort of, um, in terms of the providers. Um, and the IHE is provided by an Austrian company, um, um, then the, IH, uh, the adapter and the ThinkAir is basically, you know, supported by Better, by Marant before. Um, we, have, uh, we have the terminology server that is provided by Carecom, the Danish company. Um, you know, so also the, the clinical knowledge manager, um, you know, Australian company. So really an international um, set of, set of uh, providers. <coughs> Um, just quickly, so the um, having this central uh, patient index, right, is, is really important. And we integrate, uh, we have a legal grounds to do so, but we get the data for our, from our national registries. One of the registries is the Registry of Citizens. Um, uh, also, we get data from the National Health Insurance Authority or our uh, insurance fund. And also, we get we get location data from um, from from our serving and mapping authority. So this is quite a strong uh, strong database. Um, uh, just to mention, so one of the important uh, elements of of um, you know the open EHR and structuring the data has been the patient summary. So. Uh, this is something the, um, it is being developed by the European Commission and different projects through many years. And we basically implemented that um, in Slovenia. And, um, you know, the patient summary is actually modeled using OpenHR models, so archetypes, and we have a template uh, saying it's patient summary. Um, we also tend to, tend to use um, OpenHR for other sort of to model basically most of our needs. 
So for example, e-referrals are also modeled by OpenEHR. Um, and at the end, probably we will end up with having you know, many templates for different needs and, and uh, storing all that data in our OpenHR repository. <coughs> uh, just a short view on, on the data set. Um, actually, it has now become also an international standard. Um, so the, the work done on the European level uh, has moved on, and you know, now we have a world global uh, set of, set of uh, data set, set data points um, that are considered a patient summary. Um, of course, access to, the, to our uh, central registry of patient data is not for everyone. Uh, we have uh, rules, um, so you cannot access the data just like that. You have to have either a referral, you have to be a physician, of course. A referral has to exist, um, or a consent has to exist, so we have a consent mechanism implemented. A patient can give consent to any provider um, for a short period of time or, or longer however he wishes. Um, <clears throat> and then I will jump shortly to, to, this, um, to this point, so the electronic registry of vaccinated persons. Why? Because this, uh, this sort of uh, represents, let's say, secondary usage of our patient summary data, because, you know, as part of the patient summary also contains vaccinations, this registry was really built in a quick and also cost like effective way because we were able to reuse the data we got from into our patient summary. So the vaccination record um, uh, was basically, let's say, just pushed into this registry. <clears throat> and the last component, the sort of, uh, or the service that is being used by patients is the patient portal, right? This is how patients can see what we are collecting about them or what is being exchanged about them in our infrastructure. Um, currently, that is, you know, appointments, referrals, prescriptions, and also all the documents, all the discharge letters, uh, patient summary records that are connect, uh, collected in the um, central register of patient data. <clears throat> Just a few images of how things look. And the last, so, um, Currently, we have um, you know, more than almost like 80% of um, population have at least one document in, in our central register of patient data. Um, almost 1.4 million um, patients have a patient summary record in a structured way, right? Um, you know, the number of documents is constantly rising, and we're happy about it, right? And um, Yeah, that would be that would be it from my side. Yeah. Thank you very much. So we're running just a little bit over, but I think there's time for one question. No takers? Well, I'll just say the templates that were built that we used in Aperta and ended up in Finland and Malta. Some of them originated in that project around the, the International Patient Summary. So, and I, I think it's something that we'll come back to. We've, we've been discussing in the board that this, uh, they call it the IPS, International Patient Summary, is effectively a collaboration mostly with HL7 people, but also with SNOMED, and we'll get involved, build templates that match that, and be able to use some of the, the, the SNOMED um, free set of codes that they've just released. So, yes. I think, thank, thank you very much. Thank you.